Oh, hello. Welcome to another video. Uh, today on Tabletop Impulse, we're going to be looking at the Kill Team Grand Tournament pack. Right, so this is the first Kill Team Grand Tournament that I'm aware of. Uh, the first one in the UK, anyway. Uh, were there any of the official Games Workshop events in America have been branded as Grand Tournaments? I'm not entirely sure. Let me know in the comments. But we're going to be going through the Grand Tournament Mission Pack for Warhammer Fest. Um, so, on the first page here they say Grand Tournament Rules Pack. Our tournaments have been carefully crafted to present a format that appeals to the broadest variety of players possible. This event pack provides information to prepare for the Kill Team Grand Tournament at Warhammer Fest. The Kill Team Grand Tournament takes place over two days, giving you the chance to use your Monday to enjoy all that Warhammer Fest and Manchester have to offer, or get a head start on your journey home. A weekend adventure full of new friendships made, old friendships restored, mega battlefield experiences, stunning kill teams, and the chance to enjoy the most exciting Warhammer event ever in one of the UK's most vibrant cities. So, as I mentioned on the previous video, where we looked at the Warhammer Fest ticketing um, kind of thing in general, I'm kind of hoping that there'll be some time between rounds on Saturday and Sunday to enjoy all that Warhammer Fest has to offer. Um, if you are going... I Listen, I, I grew up uh, in and near Liverpool, so there's a certain uh, antipathy between Liverpool and Manchester, the two northern cities. I'm not convinced that you want to spend your Monday roaming around Manchester. If you've got your Warhammer Fest tickets for the Monday, I'm sure that you'll find things to do within, within Warhammer Fest. Um, so, the essential information page. Now, this is the first thing that's really exciting to me, uh, because people that have been following this channel for a long time will know that I've been banging on about how we want mixed tournaments mixed critical ops and into the dark and here's what we get missions selected from kill team critical operations mission pack and into the dark so a mix of critical operations and into the dark um, it's going to be a um a, far, a six round tournament so again one of the common complaints of warhammer world tournaments is oh there are only four rounds it's six rounds okay so that sounds really good um everything else is basically as you would expect the other important thing to say is that if you look in the booklet, it will let you know that on Friday, so the day before the event, uh, between 5 and 10, they will allow pre-registration for uh, the, the Kill Team uh, tournament. If I can, I will pre-register, but it looks a lot like we'll be getting into sort of Stockport at about 10pm, um, you know, because we live down in uh, Colchester, in Essex. So it's going to be about five hours, considering that we're going to have to stop in the car, and there's just no, there's not going to be any getting away uh, any any earlier. So unless we have some kind of miracle on the motorways, we won't be able to pre-register. But if you are able to get there for that time, then I'm pretty strongly advise pre-registering if if you're if you're able to do so. Kilty construction and painting. So there's no really big surprises here. Um, these pages are mostly reproduced from. Um, you know, the, the Warhammer World Tournament Packs um, it says here that if you, you can either bring physical printed rosters or use the, the BCP to put on a digital copy of your roster. So I don't... So I'll be using BCP, I think, to put a digital copy of my roster. I'm probably using Star Striders, so the whole roster thing is pretty moot because Star Striders have zero choice um, as to what they put on their roster. Will I win a Grand Tournament with Star Striders? Who knows? Um... Of course I might change it. February? Uh, no, March is a long way away. April, even? When is this thing? February, March, April? Uh, da, 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 da. April. End of April. So, yeah, it's a long way away. There'll be, surely, there'll be another Kill Team box by then. Um, potentially even two, right? Because there'll be the January, February, March Kill Team box will definitely be out. Maybe the maybe the uh, April May June kill team box will come out in April, right? Um, and then so we'll have a whole year's worth of stuff out by the time it's this event. Who knows? Uh, there'll be more white dwarf teams. Who knows? There'll be buffs and nerfs and nerfs and buffs. But if the event was tomorrow, I'd be taking star strikes. Uh, you have to paint things. This is not news for anybody that's played any Games Workshop events. There was a funny copy and paste error here. Um, you must maintain a WYSIWYG standard for the models. For example, if your army includes a space room with a melter gun, the model must be equipped with a melter gun. Equipment such as frag grenades that are included on every model in a unit, but not included on every model of that type need to be modelled. Um, obviously, that's a copy and paste from a 40k event pack. 
Uh, I will eat my own socks if they are expecting you to model on equipment for Kill Team, given that you change your equipment, you know, are encouraged to change your equipment before every game once you've seen the matchup and once you've seen the um, your opponent's Kill Team and things like that. The tournament format. Uh, so this is interesting. So there's new pairing verbiage here. Win path pairings. Your opponent for your first game will be randomly determined. Subsequent rounds will use win path to pair opponents in each round. This pits players both against someone with the same record and who won lost their games in the same rounds. For example, a player who lost round one and won round two will play an opponent that did the same, rather than someone that lost their first that, that lost their first two and lost their third round. This is done to ensure a similar strength of schedule pair off to ensure an increasing level of skill parity and sportsmanship with each subsequent round as they face people who have had an increasingly similar play and outcome experience across the event. So this is slightly different. So the Wire World tournaments use Swiss, um, which is um, simply pairing people off with similar point scores overall. But you could, if you basically, if you've won your first, what it's saying is, I think, um, first of all, it's not using your full score. So the Wire World Swiss will patch people will match people up with similar scores, including all the different objective scores and things like that. Whereas this is simply looking at wins and losses. But I also think that at Warhammer World, if you kind of won, if you won and then lost, you could be placed up against someone in round three with someone who had lost and then won. And the argument is that those aren't necessarily the same difficulty of thing. Um, so... It's not 100% clear to me what the difference is, but it is definitely different verbiage. So they have changed something to do with the, the pairings uh, versus the Warhammer World pairings. Um, I think it mostly has to do with them not using the full score, though, and just win-lose. They've increased the time for a round. So two hours now for a round at the Grand Tournament versus an hour and 45 at Warhammer World. And then they've adjusted the milestones uh, consummate with that. So um, you've got slightly more time. The, the time limit for don't begin a new turning point. Our judge mission is now 10 minutes rather than, rather than 5. And so on and so on. Um, I don't think you need 2 hours to play a game of Kill Team. If you're not teaching the game. And you're reasonably well practiced at what you're doing. So hopefully that means that I can lose a game in, in 45 minutes and go and look at the cool things at Warhammer Fest. Um, obviously I'll try my best to win. If I go well, it goes well, it goes well. But um, I see the extra the sort of two hours sort of slack there as allowing me time to go and do things, uh, other things at the event, I guess. Terrain. So just this one quick note about the terrain. It just says terrain and play mats will be provided by the events team. If the boards look significantly different to the map, please contact a member of the events team. And then they show a map. I am, there's already people been saying online like, oh, the terrain looks weird for Warhammer Fest. Like, what, what are they doing? What are these sticks? And what are these weird ruins? And what's all this? I am 99% sure that this is just an example of what kind of map will be provided for you. They're not saying this is a map that will be used on one of the tables, or this is the map that's going to be used on every table for every game. They're just saying you will get a map like this to put your terrain on your table in the same way. Okay? We also know, remember, from the start, again, some people have missed this, some of the missions will be from Into the Dark, which means that they will be using the maps. One assumes from Into the Dark. Now, as Zimbad was saying, or maybe they'll do like different maps just to uh, screw with people. Because they specifically said Into the Dark, like from the Into the Dark pack, I'm imagining they're going to stick with those missions and not invent their own stuff. But we don't, we don't know. So that's terrain. Uh, big fan of, of fixed layouts. Um, big fan of that. So good. That should help things move along really quickly. Uh, the player's code. So, some of this has been revised. I, um, so, 5.1 player conduct. They've written, The great Olympian Jesse Owens once said, Friendships born on the field of athletic strife are the real goal of competition. 
Awards become corroded. Friends gather no dust. While Warhammer is no athletic competition, the saying holds true. Warhammer 40,000 is a game best played in this spirit, and we place great emphasis on playing excellent games with like-minded people at our events. Therefore, we expect players to play each game with a certain code of conduct to support this. When you arrive at your table for a game, greet your opponent, introduce yourself, and start the game promptly. We then expect players to treat each other positively and demonstrate good sportsmanship throughout the game. Like, I agree with their message. I like it. I support it. I understand it. I think it is a bit self-aggrandizing of Games Workshop to compare playing a game of Kill Team with what Jesse Owens did, which, for anyone that requires the history lesson, um, he was a an athlete in, in America. He's a, a black gentleman. He went over to the Olympic Games, which were in Nazi Germany, right, who hadn't yet declared war on everybody, but Hitler was definitely there at the Olympic Games being in charge and being very loudly racist. And Jesse Owens went over to this country and proceeded to beat a lot of the German athletes in various um, games uh, in front of Hitler. And, you know, that is not just athletic skill, but that is absurd levels of personal bravery. And I think comparing that to going to Manchester to play some kill team is a little bit... <sighs> it's a little bit off to me. Like, fair play Games Workshop, I understand what you are trying to do. Honestly, this reminds me of the time, and, you, and this is in an old white dwarf, you can check this out, where they compared Citadel Finecast to the moon landing. Like, that was a thing that was in a White Dwarf editorial when Finecast first came out. They compared Citadel Finecast to the moon landing, and this is kind of up there with that. So, tell people to be nice, and I'm, I, 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 like, this is not me saying that them talking about play, and they said our player conduct is wrong. I just think that, like, Bringing up Jesse Owens and comparing your your Warhammer tournament to the Olympic Games is 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 perhaps a bit much. Um, everybody loses from time to time. Be ready to lose a few games of Warhammer. It seems an odd thing to say, but it is in the nature of any event that only a few players, at most, will finish the weekend without a loss. Barring ties, half of you will lose your very first game of the weekend. In fact. Fine, this stuff's all fine, and this stuff's largely copy and pasted from the Wild World um, book. Winning with skill and grace is a rewarding and perfectly acceptable goal. Losing with skill and grace, however, is both more challenging and more laudable. These events present you with the opportunity to build friendships with fellow hobbyists who share your interests. Friendships you can renew and celebrate every time you travel to a Warhammer event or local events. A single great friendship built out of your experiences at these will outweigh any number of individual victories across your battles this weekend. In fact, if you do your best, have a great time and build some lasting friendships you haven't really lost at all. This is, like, like I say, this is all really good stuff. I just find <laughs> that first little bit's a bit kind of like, really? No. We play toy soldiers, like, you know? Um... We expect all players to see the game through to the very end and not concede. Doing so can impact tiebreakers in the final rankings. If you have to concede, you follow the rules in the Kill Team Core book and you, you give your opponent all the points. Um, if you have an emergency, you can't proceed, just let the staff know right away. Arrive in good time, allow enough time to register yourselves, uh, attend the briefings, we're ready to start on time. We'll have to see what the queues are like on the Saturday and how easy it is for people to get in to register for their tournaments and how easy it is for those tournaments to start on time. But, um, you know, I'll be there on time. It's worth it. it I remember the, the, the queues at Warhammer Fest when I was in Coventry to register and to get started at the start. Well, that was an intense queue to get in and to get processed. Um, now, in fairness, that was... Um, <sighs> What had happened recently was it the Manchester Arena bombings, like the last year, because obviously there wasn't a Warhammer Fest over COVID, and then the previous Warhammer Fest to that, there was a lot of police as well, a lot of bag checks as well, but it was a big queue, big, big queue. Um, judges. 
Event staff will be prominently visible in the tournament hall throughout the event and hold the final say on game rules and tournament issues. Rulings may be changed at the judge's discretion with new information presented, always based on correct rules interpretations rather than adhering to previous precedents. When calling for assistance, please be prepared to provide any relevant rules to the particular question. At Warhammer events, judges are empowered to actively stop instances of illegal play with or without player specific request for intervention. If a player has concerns at any point, they're welcome and encouraged to call a judge. We will not have judges at every table and we cannot stop every instance of minor misplay. Our goal here is to make sure all the games played at Warhammer Fest are enjoyable for everyone. So I think there are some other games, I think Magic the Gathering might be like this, where judges can't interfere in your game unless you ask them too like they're not there are definitely games out there where at events judges are supposed to say nothing if if, neither, if if a misplay happens and neither opponent notices it like neither player has noticed the misplay the judges aren't supposed to say anything i think i, I could be totally off base um and they're saying they don't do that awards uh so there's a lot of changes here um so there are prizes for first second and third place Along with best painted kill team. Okay, so 6.1, first, second, and third. First, second, and third place will be determined by wins. Should there be a tie record, placings will be determined by victory points, completed secondaries, and lastly, tournament points, strength of schedule. So this is a real big material change, actually. To those of you that go to Warhammer World events, you'll know Warhammer World events, completed secondaries is the first tiebreaker, followed by total victory points. So actually getting more secondary points becomes more important to you than getting more victory points. Um, whereas now what they're saying is that victory points, as a, a total victory points are the first tiebreaker followed by secondary as the second tiebreaker. So bear that in mind. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the painting award. Paragraphs here for the painting award, which is all new. So, best painted will also be awarded. Paint scores determined in two phases. First, two judges will visit every table during the first day of play. Each player receives an initial paint score of 30 for battle ready, 50 an excellent table looking tabletop army, or 70 a showcase army or work of art. If you get a 30, you're going to be... Unless you've literally just painted it and put some contrast on and, 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 and you don't care, fine. But I get, if I get a 30, I'll be really sad. Like, oh, you got 30 points. That sounds really positive. And it actually means that your army kind of looks bad. Um, if I go and the judge looks at my stuff and goes, yeah, 50 points, I'll be like, yeah, okay. Um, I think that my stuff's reasonably well painted, but other people never seem to think so. Um... After this initial pass, the head paint judge will. After the initial pass, the head paint judge will determine the mark for an army upon whose initial score the first two judges disagreed. Once initial scores have been tallied, each player that has scored a confirmed seventy will then be invited to the showcase. The showcase takes place on the evening of the first day, entails a second round of judging from all three judges. They conduct an in-depth, exacting review of each showcase army and give it a score of minus five to plus five each. These three scores are then tallied together and added to the base of 70, giving a player a paint score within 55 to 85. The marks are awarded against the combined considerations of technical skill, visual impact, artistic decision and the consistency across the army. Right. So they've got a little checklist. A visually arresting display may help improve your score at the judge's discretion, but the inclusion of a display does not automatically garner points. However, particularly stunning displays may be eligible for independent awards. I tell you now, I'm not making a little display base for my kill team. Maybe secretly that's what you have to do if you want to be in contention for these things. Now, this doesn't make any sense, right? This bottom paragraph. As mentioned above, in addition to best painted and second best painted awards, right? So, first of all, there's best painted, there's no mention of a second best painted award. Um, every player's paint score will be normalised and added to your normalised competitive track score. Combined, these represent your best overall score. Every player's paint score will be normalised and added to your normalised competitive track score. Combined, these represent your best overall score. 
do we take that then that hobby has some kind of bearing on who wins? Does it somehow go into this strength of schedule? Thing? Like, this feels like it's expecting something to be written up here that isn't here, right? This paragraph just doesn't... The best I can work out is hobby has some kind of bearing on who wins. I And I don't have a problem with that. I know people, some people do, like, it's a gaming competition, it's not a painting competition. I don't want to lose, I didn't paint my models, I will get those comments. But, actually, I don't think there's a problem if it's a tiebreaker, third or fourth in the list. If you go, well, these people are equally skilled at the game, but this guy's army's better painted, so he deserves the, the prize, that's fine. I, I don't mind the concept. What irritates me is the ambiguity here where I don't know what's going on. Like, that's problematic, Games Workshop. What the heck do you mean every player's paint score will be normalised and added to your normalised competitive track score, combined with these represent your best overall score? Is this a mantra that we repeat to summon a kind of demonic entity? I, mm, am I just being really stupid? It feels like there should be something up here. Is it as mentioned above? As mentioned where? I, I promise you, I haven't omitted anything that was in the booklet. Sportsmanship Awards. Awards and recognition may be given at random for superior sportsmanship. Like, what is superior sportsmanship? I know how to be a good sport and a bad sport. I know what they look like. What is superior? Like, I know when someone's being an idiot. And I know not to be an idiot. But if we take not being an idiot as the baseline, what does superior sportsmanship... Look, just let your opponent win. I don't know. Players may be disqualified or removed for consistently poor sportsmanship. Fair, fine, good. Um, yeah, a couple of question marks on that page for me, honestly. If you think you know what um, having your paint score normalised and added to your normalised competitive track score means, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much. Legalese is the last page, so um, you can be DQ'd. Uh, Games Workshop does not tolerate any form of physical or verbal violence or harassment at the event or online. Players who demonstrate aggressive or demeaning behaviour to staff or other attendees who repeatedly break the rules or who fail to follow Games Workshop's instructions at the event may be disqualified and removed from the event without refund. Right? And then that whole paragraph is pointless because then it says Games Workshop reserves the right to remove players from the event at our discretion. So they can just say no, get out. And obviously... That's not a bad thing, because if they just took everybody's money and then said, ha-ha, you're all disqualified, yes, you'd have no redress in court, but they would just have trashed their reputation. They're not going to do that. What this clause allows them to do is there was that tournament in Spain where um, the guy turned up with, like, I don't think it was even, like, I'm not across the details, but I don't think it was even arguably, like, oh, they're sort of maybe Nazi symbols on my jacket. No, I think they were actually, like, you know, this... It was like, like really clear cut and then they were like, oh, you can't eject me for that because it's not in your stated terms of conditions and law and this and that. And it was a whole thing. Um, if Games Workshop are clever, if somebody, even even if they had some kind of, ex they could just say, right, you're being removed and then say, why? And you'd go, well, I'm not giving you a reason because I can remove you at my discretion. And we'd all secretly know the reason, but you wouldn't have to go down the rabbit hole of is that a valid reason to get rid of somebody who could just say discretion in it so by yeah which is the best way of operating i think probably there's a photography and filming clause that basically just boils down to you can be filmed and put on social media and this that and the other there's nothing there that says i can't take for like a warhammer world i can't take photographs or film things uh if i'm gonna make money off them which now i am because i have monetized but at this event there's no rule that said i can't take photographs and film so I'm going to obviously ask my opponent's permission, but I'm going to be able to say, look, oh, can I photograph, you know, I'm having a YouTube channel, Tabletop Impulse, can I take a photograph of our game? And most people are probably going to be like, yes, because people like having their models put on the internet, and then they can be regaled of the story about how they beat me. <laughs> because, you know, I'm actually really hoping, I know that Glass is going to the Grand Tournament, I really hope to end up playing against him only because we are both on these ridiculous losing streaks. And if we end up playing each other, one of us, I mean, it will probably be a draw. 
um, with, with zero points on them, so I don't know. But one of us has to break our losing streak, hopefully, right? Data Protection. We comply by the Data Protection Act 2018. Hooray. Um, yes, you can do a subject access request by emailing privacy at uwplc.com. Splendid. And then finally, a disclaimer, they reserve the right to make changes to the events or to schedule for any reason, any time, without prior notice. Which renders reading the whole thing pretty much null and void, doesn't it? But there you go. Um, final thoughts. So, there are some important material changes to this versus Warhammer World Tournaments. To recap those in full, because I got sidetracked on so many issues with their funny wording. Um, there will be Into the Dark Boards. Hooray! Total victory point is more important than secondaries. Fine. The matchmaking, it looks like it's going to be less granular. Probably fine. Um, lots of rules for the painting contest. The rules are fine. The painting contest potentially affecting the overall outcome for who wins the event would be fine by me, but in a, I realise it's not uncontroversial. Being Happening in a strange and unknowable way is, is less fine. Let me know in the comments if you're coming along to the Kill Team Grand Tournament so that we can uh, look out for each other. And um, please do do all the YouTube things. Um, obviously, we've got a 1,000 subscribers now. So now, obviously, I'm going to go on and get to 10,000 subscribers, right? Because decimal places in every video. But please do subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like finger. Uh, leave a comment. Um, those kinds of things that's really helpful as well i hope you have a great rest of your sunday afternoon whatever it is that you're doing with it cheerio folks <laughs>